Hi guys, so I'm Anita and I'm back with another video. Today I want to share with you my October reading wrap up. It's insanely late. Um, I don't know why I am so late with my videos these days, but I'm sorry. Um, in October was a pretty good reading month for me, um, in considering this year's, how this year's has been going. I re ended up reading 15 books, so I'm definitely very fine with that. Uh, um, two of them were rereads. Um, let's start out with the first book that I finished. The first book that I finished in October was Murder on Murray Hill by Victoria Thompson. This is book 15, I think, of uh, the Gaslight Mystery series. I'm a little bit unsure at how many books I'm into it now. Um, Murder on Murray Hill was great. It is just... These mysteries are really really fun um i enjoyed them i enjoyed them a lot and they, this one was no different and i ended up giving them giving it a four out of five stars next up i ended up finishing the last hero by tara pratchett which is a standalone in the disc world no it's a rinswind book in the disc world but this is written as a graphic novel um kind of thing so it's been illustrated all the way through um and has been texted like this. Um, overall, this was definitely not my favorite to have printed. It had some good moments. Um, but actually, my main complaint about this was that for me, it was difficult to read it because it was so shiny when you were reading it and the text was very small. So for me, actually, I thought that it was difficult seeing the text um, completely. And so it took me so much longer to read it than I initially expected. But it was good enough, and I ended up giving it 3 out of 5 stars. Um, but as I said, it's not my favorite to have Pratchett. Um, but it was a good one nonetheless. Then I finished Dead Reckoning by Charlie and Harris. This is book 11, I think, in the... In the... Um, Took his deck houses or Southern Vampire. Yeah, I enjoyed this one. These books are relatively quick re reads. Um, they are... Following Suki Stackhouse, who is living in the in Louisiana, and um, it's ba it's the book series that's inspired the TV show True Blood. I've never watched the TV show, so I don't know how well they compare. Um, but yeah, uh, I enjoyed it all right. It was good enough, and I ended up giving this one three out of five stars as well. It was not. My favorite in the series, but it was a fine book, um, and I'm looking forward to finishing up this series hopefully this year. The next one I finished was a library read, and that was Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This was a book where we were following this woman who is um, a babysitter for this family, and she is one day asked to look after the kid, and she takes him to a store uh, nearby to yeah to sort of get him away from the family and while they're th at the store um, the store manager claims that she's stolen this baby and this sets off this whole um, book and it talks a lot about um, how a lot of people have good intentions with towards um, people of color but they end up not really being helpful anyway and how um, fo they're falsely supporting them in a way and uh, it was definitely a really interesting read and considering how what things that's happened this past year um, it was definitely enlightening in that way and I enjoyed it it was not my favorite thing but I did really end up enjoying the story overall so I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars the next one I finished was the southern Book Club's Guide to Slay Vampires um, by Grady Hendrix. This is the first time I've read anything by Grady Hendrix and I started with this one because it was available. It's a new one and I listened to this one in audio which was done really well. It was narrated by Barney Turpin so it's I knew it was going to be a safe audio choice. Um, and this one was definitely interesting but I think it was a little overhyped for my liking. Um, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting, I guess, uh, and I wasn't super... I don't know. I just... 
I think I expected something else from it and I didn't get that. Um, but I ended up giving it a three and a half stars, so it's not like it was a bad thing or anything. The next next up was the first reread of the month that I did, and that was uh, rereading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I'm going to breeze over this really quickly and say that it was fine rereading it, but the one of the things that I've noticed on my reread is how much I have come to being annoyed with Ron. Ron used to be one of my favorite characters and now he's just a really, really annoying character to me. And that was really interesting seeing that from that perspective. Um, yeah. Uh, next up, I, re I read Amelia and the Viscount by Samantha Holt. This is a historical romance. It was not a very long rom a book. It was like a couple, just over a hundred pages. Um, it followed uh, Amelia who is um, the second oldest, I think, or something like that, of the Chadwick family. Um, the Chadwick family are more or less all redheads and they don't think they would be the first choice for many because of their color of the hair. However, they have a young, older sister who was not a redhead, who has been married off to the Scottish man and all of that. And then Amelia is also a romance writer, um, writing romance novels in under a pen name and accidentally sends off some letters that were so supposed to inspire a romance novel um but it was a sent to nicholas who is this um viscount and uh on it was not meant to be sent out it was just meant to be an inspiration for herself to get some thoughts out to start out a process of writing another romance book. But then obviously this sets off the motion of them meeting again and she's trying to um, get into his house to try and still get the letters back from him. But yeah, um, I ended up really enjoying it. It was a lot of fun and I definitely didn't expect this. Uh, I was um, surprised about how much I ended up enjoying it because I was a little reluctant about picking it up but I enjoyed it quite a lot and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. I also read another Terry Pratchett book this month and that was The Amazing Maurice and His Educated Rodents which is a standalone in the disc world. It follows Maurice who is a cat um, who is like this leader of this rodents, uh, rats and gerbils and stuff and um, yeah it was a lot of fun. Uh, and it's sort of a middle grade-esque type of book and I end up giving it four out of five stars, I think Yeah, it was better than uh, the last two years. I definitely enjoyed it, but it wasn't a favorite Terry Pratchett, but it was a four star worthy Terry Pratchett, so definitely still enjoyed it Another book that I finished in October was The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Cole This is the third book in the Lady Astronaut series and for the first time in the Lady Astronaut universe We are following a different perspective we're following the perspective of Nicole, who is a wife of a um, governor of Arkansas. I forgot what it was, um, but she goes, um, she's part of the space program, she's part of the lady astronaut, and she has to go to the moon um, to set up things there. And there is apparently someone trying to sabotage everything that they are doing. Um, there's a movement called the Earth Firsters, who is trying to sabotage the um, progress that they're making in terms of trying to settle on the moon outside of the earth after this horrible event happened where um, a meteorite struck the Atlantic Ocean obliterating like the majority of the west coast or uh, east coast of America um, and all of the following things that happens is some climate changes and um, so that and the heat on earth will keep rising until it becomes unhabitable and that's why they're trying to settle somewhere else in order to save humanity um, but a lot of people believe that they should deal with humans on earth first before they start doing this because there's a lot of things happening at, on earth and stuff um, so there are people trying to sabotage everything and so this all turns into sort of a mystery surrounding that and it was definitely very very interesting I enjoyed my time so much I really think that Mary Robin Ecrow writes really excellent books and I think that it had a lot of great things happening and I like that like this one book was set sort of mid second book timeline and onwards um, so it sort of happens at the same time some of the things that happens in the second book so it was interesting seeing it from that perspective I'm looking forward to reading the fourth book which comes out I think in a couple of years time now <laughs> 
I ended up giving this book 5 out of 5 stars. I highly enjoyed it. The next book I finished was Battleground by Jim Butcher. This is another very um, anticipated new release. Um, it's the 6th, si 17th book in the Dresden Files universe. It sets off right after the most recent one, which was Peace Talks, which came out in June or something like that, May or June. Um, I ended up really, really enjoying this one. Um, it is a, like a big epic battle, battle, more or less from the beginning to the end. So if you don't like battle scenes, I think this would be a more difficult read to read. But I would also say that because it was a battle scene, it didn't get as high a rating it could have gotten if it had a little bit more elf kind of things in it. I ended up giving it a four and a half stars. I definitely enjoyed it, but it wasn't my favorite. Um, it wasn't my favorite hairdressing books at all, but it definitely had a lot of things happening and there was a specific character death that I was not happy with, um, but kind of knew that someone was about to, to, to go, but it hurt me. And um, yeah, um, overall enjoyed it. Four and a half stars. The next one I finished was You Should See Me in a Crown by, by Leah Johnson. This is a YA contemporary that follows this girl who is uh, trying to get a scholarship to university. She's having a really hard time getting that because she sort of looked, not looked at as a serious candidate for that. Or even though she has really, really high grades and she's uh, like one of the top of the classes, um, the scholarship went to someone white, someone not color of color and stuff but she finds that if she can get no voted for as like uh, prom queen she will be able to get a scholarship that way and so she d gets in a mission to try and get that and then at the same time there's this romance happening between her and this other girl and it's really really amazing and there's a lot of talk about being black about being queer and Sort of like that. It was really, really interesting. I'm personally not a big fan of YA contemporaries, but this was definitely a good one. It was not, but because it wasn't just my favorite kind of thing, I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. But I will highly recommend it to anyone who are who enjoys um, uh, contemporary young adult contemporaries because I think that they definitely would really end up enjoying this one. I think it had a lot of great things going for it. Um, the next thing that I finished was Scott Pilgrim Volume 3 by uh, Daniel Brian Lee O'Malley. I keep forgetting his name. This is the uh, uh, manga kind of thing set in Canada, in Toronto, following Scott Pilgrim, who is um, part of this band and he has to try and fight up evil exes of his girlfriend. And this one just never really connected with me. I had took so much time reading this and I had a hard time following along with the plot. So I ended up giving, but there were elements of it that I enjoyed. So I ended up giving it a two and a half, I think, um, two or three stars. Um, but I do enjoy the art, so it's difficult for me to read this. Then I finished Blood Promise by Rachel Mead. This is uh, the fourth book in the Vampire Academy series. It's been fun rereading the Vampire Academy. The first one was... Um, difficult one to absorb because I did, it definitely didn't live up to what I remembered. But this one um, has been my least favorite since then, but I still really enjoyed it. It has a lot of t background talk about what happened, what uh, like what sets up the world a little bit more. It lets us know more about the world building. It lets us know about what's going to introduce us to some characters that is going to be very important in the spin-off series and stuff like that. And for that, it was really, really interesting rereading it, and I read it rel relatively quickly again. I ended up giving it, I think I still give it a five star. I give it a five stars the first time. I haven't really changed my rating. I think it's difficult to rate these because I have such fond memory of memories of reading them, but I definitely enjoyed it. The last and final book that I read in October was Ring Shop by P. Jelly Clark. This is a novella that Todd of Come released in. October. It's a sort of historical fantasy but with horror elements, I guess, into it. It seems like it's a um, historical set book where um, the Ku Klux Klan is peaking kind of thing. Or they're doing their thing 
And then there are, is another rebellious group that's trying to stop the Ku Klux Klan with a magical way and they end up like turning to dust <laughs> kind of thing. It's quite interesting. I really, really ended up enjoying um, this novella. It is definitely, I only read one other things by P.G. L. Clark before, so I only have one thing to compare it to, but I definitely prefer this one over that one. I, I really enjoyed how much Clark managed to um, put into this novella. I mean, considering it's under 200 pages books, um, a story, and he manages to write such a an interesting, believable story and so on point on things that's been going on. It's just really, it was really, really a great read. And I end up giving it a four and a half stars. I definitely really, really enjoyed it and will be, be reading more by P.G. Ellie Clark in the future. Um, my biggest issue with this was I listened to this in audio and the narrator of the audio was not super well great in my opinion i think she had a sort of screechy voice that was really really annoying to listen to in times um like especially when she was talking from a specific perspective um and that annoyed me a little bit and probably was also the reason why i couldn't end up i didn't end up giving it a five out of five stars um because i should be able to but um i I think if it had been done differently, maybe it would have gotten a 5 out of 5 stars, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, definitely still recommend it, but maybe I will recommend not reading it in audio form. Um, that would be my my recommendation. Um, but overall, I just really enjoyed it. As I said, I gave it 4.5 stars. I think he packed so many things into this very, sh very short story, so definitely recommend it for that. So this was the last and final thing that I read in October. Let me know in the comments down below what you've been reading in October. What was your favorite read? Um, have you read any of the books that I've been talking about today? Did you read a lot of horror books? Um, I'm pretty happy with how everything, what I read. And um, yeah, this is all I had for you today. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video very, very soon. Goodbye.